So, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Nikolaos Harlampidis and today I'm going to present to you a two-step uh, chaos-based 3D model encryption. First, we're going to start with uh, an introduction. Then I'm going to uh, show you the proposed chaotic maps and uh, uh, the proposed encryption scheme based on these chaotic maps. Then we're going to uh, provide you with some uh, security analysis uh, for the encryption scheme. And then we're going to finish this presentation with some conclusions and future research. So first things first, what is chaos? For example, in physics and mathematics, by chaos and chaotic uh, systems, we refer to deterministic systems that showcase extreme sensitivity to initial conditions and parameter values. This, this means that uh, if I was to compute the solutions of a system with almost identical initial conditions, these solutions will diverge, it's, we di diverge from each other in a very short period of time. There are two major areas for chaotic systems. The first is uh, emergence in nature with uh, applications in engineering, meteorology, biology, astronomy, and basically in almost all physical phenomena. And the second is uh, chaos applicability. And we see uh, applications in uh, robotics, uh, weather forecast, pandemic crisis, circuits, and information security. In particular, in uh, the discipline of information security, there are many advancements in the field of chaos-based cryptography with ubiquitous applicability. For example, in random bit generators, watermarking, hashing, secure communications. The determinism, uh, the dubious behavior and the low computational cost of chaotic systems provide an excellent foundation for implementing a plethora of encryption schemes and particularly chaotic maps of low dimensions that display regions of constant chaotic behavior. So with that in mind, we decided to modify two chaotic maps uh, in order to uh, take uh, such uh, behavior. The first map uh, we uh, took was the sign map and we modified it to obtain a new polynomial chaotic map with odd exponents. And uh, the analysis the, of its behavior here on the left, you can see the modified map. And uh, as you can see in comparison to uh, the classic sign map, we see that uh, it has a constant uh, chaotic behavior and uh, this is exactly what we were aiming for. And this is also being verified by uh, the corresponding approximate entropy uh, diagram where in black we can see uh, the sign polynomial map and in red you can see uh, the classic uh, sign map. So the next map we took was uh, the circle map and again we modified it uh, to obtain uh, a circle polynomial map with odd exponents. And again we performed an analysis here on the left you can see the bifurcation diagram and the corresponding Lyapunov exponent diagram of the modified circle map. And here on the right you can see uh, the classic uh, uh, circle map uh, with respect to the k parameter. And again, we see that uh, the circle map has, uh, uh, the modified circle map has uh, uh, more complex behavior. Uh, again, here uh, you can see uh, the bifurcation and Lyapunov exponent diagrams on the left of, of the modified map and on the right of the classic with respect to omega parameter. And again, we can see that uh, the modified circle map has a more complex behavior. And uh, we also uh, plotted the approximate entropy diagrams where we verify uh, our previous results. So we have uh, our new chaotic maps and uh, we move forward to the encryption part. Uh, so we decided uh, to move forward with uh, uh, an encryption of a 3D object. Why 3D object uh, encryption? And that is because uh, nowadays a plethora of areas such as engineering, medicine, game development, uh, car designs, uh, conduct research through uh, 3D uh, representations. And uh, for example, uh, uh, 
3D image, uh, 3D medical images for patient treatment, or even uh, uh, this uh, cuboid with uh, cubic holes uh, originally was uh, designed as a 3D scaffold for uh, tissue engineering applications. As such, uh, safeguarding uh, digital 3D models is uh, meaningful since uh, they may refer to either sensitive uh, information or products still in research uh, stage and its patent uh, is uh, pending. So, we have uh, our uh, 3D image and uh, we think how we can uh, actually move forward with uh, uh, the encryption part. Uh, a 3D object is uh, more complex uh, than an image. So, uh, we define a 3D object through a pair V, F, uh, where V is the vertex coordinates and F is the connectivity list. Uh, and uh, basically V is, uh, the vertices are the points in space where two or more edges connect and they are defined uh, this way. And the faces, which is the connectivity list, and that's why we say it connectivity list, is because uh, they show us uh, the connections between the vertices to uh, generate a surface. And they are uh, defined this way. So uh, the next step is, uh, after we define our uh, 3D image, is uh, to uh, shuffle the vertex coordinates and the faces. The vertex, uh, we shuffle them by uh, generating uh, L matrix uh, and R matrix, which uh, take values uh, one or zero. So basically we do a post multiply uh, the vertex uh, coordinates with L and uh, pre multiply L with uh, the vertex coordinates and post multiply them with uh, R to obtain uh, the shuffled uh, coordinates. And uh, the same also we do for uh, the faces. After, and uh, here is, uh, you can see the resulted uh, shuffled uh, 3D object. And uh, the next step in order to make our encryption scheme even more secure, we take uh, the, vertic uh, the vertex coordinates and we apply a modulation to them. And we do that because uh, what we exactly want is to make uh, uh, our object to be uh, unrecognizable, to mask its uh, original uh, form. So uh, we do it by following uh, these steps. Next, uh, we uh, actually move forward with uh, security analysis. So uh, by taking... Uh, uh, parameter values uh, like this. We performed uh, on uh, the encrypted image uh, uh, security analysis and uh, we applied the structural similarity index. And uh, in this case, uh, structural similarity index for uh, 3D image uh, implies that uh, if we get values from ma minus one or one, close there implies matched uh, vertex positions are uh, otherwise that would imply that the vertex positions are uh, mismatched so uh, we computed uh, the values for uh, the original uh, versus the shuffled vertex uh, the shuffled uh, 3d object and the original versus the encrypted object and as we can see here we have uh, values uh, that are uh, very close to zero so this is something that uh, uh, is uh, desired and it encourages us uh, to uh, move uh, forward with uh, this encryption scheme. Uh, another uh, test we performed was uh, correlation coefficient. So basically, uh, we uh, examined uh, the correlation between the original vertex positions, the vertex coordinates with uh, the uh, shuffled and encrypted uh, vertex uh, coordinates. And uh, what we can see here is that uh, uh, the correlation coefficients are very close again to zero, and this is something desired again. Uh, next, uh, uh, we performed a peak signal to noise ratio test. And uh, in this case, a high positive ratio implies match signals. 
uh, while on the other hand, a low negative uh, low uh, value of uh, implies mismatched uh, signals. And again, here uh, you can see here that our uh, values are uh, very lower than uh, very low values of uh, peak signal to noise ratio. Uh, now to the key space uh, sensitivity, uh, the re minimum requirement for an encryption to be robust uh, is uh, 2 to the power of 100. And uh, in our case, because we have 32 parameters and for a precision of 16 digits, the upper bound uh, key space uh, can be computed to be 2 to the power of 1792. And furthermore, since uh, the system is chaos based, any minor change in the parameters will uh, result in a completely different outcome. Therefore, the sensitivity is ensured. Now, we also uh, did a distribution of occupied positions uh, in the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and Z coordinate. And uh, you can see here that uh, uh, in blue, we can see the original model and the encrypted uh, in. Uh, Orange, you can see the encrypted model. And in all of these uh, three cases, we can see that uh, uh, our encrypted model uh, has a completely different uh, dis distribution. And this is also being verified by uh, these two scatter plots, where uh, in the first, uh, in the left image, you can see the scatter plot of the original model. And in the right uh, figure, you can see the scatter plot of uh, the encrypted model. So to sum up, uh, we presented to you a, a new 3D image encryption technique. And uh, this encryption uh, scheme is based on two polynomial chaotic maps with odd exponents that exhibit large regions of uninterrupted chaotic behavior for, for uh, large changes of control parameters. Second, uh, uh, this encryption scheme is divided in two steps. The first step is the shuffle process of the vertex uh, coordinates and the faces coordinates. And the second is uh, to modulate the vertex coordinate to completely alter the shape and appearance of the th 3D object. Last, uh, we performed uh, a, a variety of tests to, uh, to verify the robustness of uh, the encryption scheme. Now, future extensions of this work uh, will uh, include uh, another basic characteristic, uh, which is uh, texture. Basically, we're going to add uh, color uh, to the 3D images. Uh, the second is, uh, as uh, the image gets higher and higher with more points, uh, this, uh, this method will uh, require uh, much more uh, computational power. So this is uh, something that uh, it, it is uh, within our interest to optimize uh, the encryption procedure in a way that is always fast, no matter the size of the 3D image. And the last steps is that uh, uh, the last extension uh, that we have in mind is that uh, given that there is a connection between the faces and the edges, it will be studied a way to produce an encrypted 3D image by altering the topology of the 3D image through the adjacent matrix. This means that uh, now the faces uh, will no longer be defined by three connected vertices, but each face will be chaotically defined, resulting to a more complex encryption schemes. Thank you very much, if you have any questions. Thank you for this very nice presentation. Uh, any questions from the audience? Oh, yes, I have a question. Yes. Uh, can I ask you, what is the practical usage of the result? I mean, in which field of science you can use it? In which field of science? Yes. Uh, in the uh, field of uh, information security, you can use this. And more deeply, like some example, because really interesting topic, and I want to understand where it's practical. So, for, for example, uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, 3D scaffold, okay? And uh, this is uh, this uh, uh, scaffold is uh, meant for uh, medical engineering purposes uh, to uh, 
to put the scaffold uh, on uh, a patient and uh, around this scaffold uh, tissue will grow. Uh, this uh, uh, scaffold, uh, as uh, research uh, grows, uh, it will be uh, patient dependent, so it will be only for a particular patient. So this uh, this becomes immediately uh, uh, how can I phrase that uh, uh, a sensitive information uh, because it, it regard it's uh, regarding a patient, and uh, on the other hand, uh, this uh, uh, given that. Uh, uh, companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, they uh, try to uh, develop products uh, one faster than the other. Uh, this, uh, uh, the encryption of uh, such object uh, will allow uh, the a pharmaceutical company to uh, secure herself uh, from uh, another uh, company that uh, uh, is interested also in the same uh, field of research. Uh, I, am I clear? Yes, uh, thank you very much for your widely answering. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, uh, Professor Bardi. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Very interesting uh, presentation, uh, Mr. Carla Bidis. Um, this uh, encryption, so we needed to make it in a very fast, in real time, as uh, I understand. Yes. And yes. So uh, your method, as I see, they they need a lot of time to make uh, this uh, compilation. Uh, uh, have you made any estimation on that in uh, real, uh, in uh, with real data uh, about uh, this encryption? Because we have to make a cooperation, comparing it with uh, cyber uh, ciphers, stream ciphers, uh, with symmetric algorithms, and uh, we can uh, make a comparison. Have you made comparison with that algorithms? Uh, this is uh, indeed a very nice question, and thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, it's a subject that uh, we are still working on it. So uh, I, I cannot say uh, at this point uh, much about it, but uh, definitely uh, there is a, a lot, uh, a lot room uh, for improvement uh, regarding uh, the efficiency of uh, the algorithm uh, in terms of uh, time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as I said, if this is a relatively uh, small image, so the encryption was uh, uh, fast, but uh, if it grows larger, uh, it, it will be time consuming and uh, not very uh, relevant. So uh, that's why we actually have to optimize this uh, procedure. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Any more questions from the audience? I have one question. Uh, if you go to the, I think it was one before last with the graphs, the slide with the graphs. Uh, not this one. The one uh, with the scatter and the. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So here in the two bottom graphs, uh, initially it's occupying almost all the range that it has available but then after encryption it seems to be concentrating near zero uh, is uh, there... yes the on the left side uh, you can see actually a structure the structure yes. of the uh, original model yeah here on so... the right uh, the uh, shape of the original model now is uh, is lost in inconclusive yes yes so uh, i was wondering if there is any if this is systematic it happens always if if you've thought of any physical meaning that this may have maybe i don't know one uh, because uh, this uh, uh, uh this happens uh, due to the model operator we are using and uh -huh. uh, here, uh, 
Okay. What is it? Okay. Uh, here, uh, in uh, when uh, we define the B vector, N controls the magnitude of the modulation. So uh, this, uh, anyone uh, can alter it, or even uh, given that uh, we are using a chaotic map uh, that uh, is not limited to values from 0 to 1, for example, but it can take uh, higher values, it can uh, completely, uh, or even lower than 0, he can uh, completely remove it this uh, magnitude term so yeah. uh, this uh, uh, that seems that like uh, uh, gathering uh, close to zero it can be uh, averted in a way yes but uh, why you say averted? is it bad that is concentrated around no, zero? no no it's not i don't it's not bad huh. uh, i mean uh, uh, but uh, if someone doesn't want, uh, doesn't like something like that, uh, he can completely remove uh, the magnitude. What I was wondering is if it's somehow also compressing, because uh, if you have all smaller values, then maybe you can uh, compress in a way. No, it's, it's, just it's a... not compressed because, as you can see here, we have values from 0 to 30, mm -hmm. but here you, we take values from 0 to 60. Ah, okay, so I couldn't see the scale, it's too yeah. small. Okay, <laughs> okay, thank you. A any other questions from the audience? Okay, so thank you for this very interesting uh, presentation. And uh, let's move on to the next one.